Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I have got a couple of drones to compare here today. This is kind of a natural comparison. Uh, the Esheen EX4 is a uh, brushless motor GPS drone uh, with a uh, three-axis gimbal, and uh, I, I believe this. Yeah, this is just a 1080p bird, so. Video quality is just going to be of a certain uh, amount, but uh, it does have uh, sonic sensors on the bottom as well as a time of flight sensor, so uh, we would expect it to be a pretty stable uh, aircraft. So the other drone we have here is the uh, original Hubson Zeno. Uh, this is the one that came out in 2018, and that's when I got this one, and I have flown the heck out of it. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're going to take this guy up in the air and, and try it out. And, and compare it. It also has a three axis gimbal. It'll shoot in 4K 30. It's got brushless motors. Uh, it performs pretty well. So uh, let's get it in the air and uh, get both of them in the air. We're going to start with the Esheen uh, EX4 and let's see how they do. Okay, it's telling me the drone is bound to the app, but of course I know we want it bound to the controller. Yeah, that says remote control control. So that's what we want. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, the compass calibration. Uh, so I'm going to click in the top here and I learned the hard way. Uh, well let's first do the gyro calibration. So gyro calibration, okay. It's on a flat surface. Calibration success. And now we're going to do the compass calibration. And <laughs> thank you Blue Skyver for showing me this trick. It says calibrating down there, but it's not. You have to hit that little blue button that says calibrating to start it. So uh, I've that yeah I've had trouble calibrating this before, but you got to hit that button. Yeah, now it wants a horizontal rotation. So I'm going to set the app down here. Hopefully I can see it. And we're going to do a horizontal calibration. Yeah, and now it says change drone facing. So we will point the camera down. How's that? We'll try that. And it says calibration success. So I'm going to click OK and we should be uh, we should be ready to fly here. So uh, I've got the camera pointed down so you can see the takeoff. And uh, and let's go ahead and hit uh, takeoff on the uh, controller here. And so the drone is very close to the ground. I mean, it's less than a foot off the ground. I'm going to move it out over the grass a little bit. Raise some altitude. Let's let it... Uh, and it's doing a circle here, which is... Uh, well, heck, it just says ready to take off on the app, so it may not even know it's taken off. But that circle, let's see if it settles down. Uh, is usually an indication. Now, now it's stopped. That's usually an indication of uh, of the drone uh, needing a compass calibration. But of course, we already did that. Let's see if we can start recording. I'm going to try it on the app, and it is. And uh, it's good to know that it's uh, that it's ready for takeoff because it's telling us that telling us that on the uh, on the app here. So let me bring it down just a little bit. Yeah, so now we're getting that magnetic uh, field interference. I've got that every time I've flown this drone. So let's take it out here a little ways. We're not getting the uh, circular motion. So I have never flown this drone that I, that I didn't get that, uh, that magnetic field interference. So, so I don't know what's up with that. No matter where I fly it, no matter uh, when, Shortly after takeoff, I get that. So uh, I'm going to tell you a way that I found to get rid of it before is to put it into uh, one of the other flight modes. So I put it into orbit. And it's turning around there. So let's go back to position. And look at that. All of a sudden, I've got safe flight. So I, I don't know why it does that but I've noticed that before. Little trick for you on the Esheen uh, EX4.
So let me uh, pick the camera up here a little bit. I could see we didn't have the camera pointed up to see the drone. So, okay. So uh, we are recording. I'm going to do our manual droning. We're going to go, and the drone is sinking uncommanded. Let's go reverse and up. And we're getting compass calibration error again. Don't know what to say about that. Okay, so let me uh, let me try adjusting the gimbal here just a little. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, so let's uh, let's do, try some forward flight. It, the drone is flying pretty good, so we're we're getting that magnetic field interference, but it doesn't seem to be affecting how the drone is flying. So we're going to fly it around here a little bit. Let's pick the gimbal back up and get that rule of thirds. And we get a little bit of that fisheye effect with this drone, but that's not a disaster. It's a it's a wide angle lens. So what we're looking for here is that the drone uh, that, that we have good uh, reliable uh, video that not a lot of jello and that it's stable. So what I'm seeing on the screen here is looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to turn it back towards us and we're going to test return to home, make sure that we got control of this dude. So return to home on the controller. Yep, and it's heading right back to us at a speed of 5 meters per second, 6 meters per second. I've noticed that it flies faster in return to home than it does in any other, uh, in any other uh, way. So we're going to stop that now. So I canceled that. Let's back it up. Safe flight now, it's saying, so that's good. Like I said, anytime you go into one of those... Uh, modes uh, usually you can get safe flight okay I'm gonna hit uh, full stick forward here and let's uh, see how fast we can get this baby up to typically it's about five meters per second for we touched on five there let's turn around the other way come back the other direction I'm going to go full stick up at the same time. Yeah, it moves right along. I have to say the drone is flying just fine. I mean, we had those compass errors, but, uh, uh, you know, I feel like the drone is... Uh, I've, I've had it other times where I've not felt quite so much in control. We haven't had any uh, uh, loss of signal or anything like that. I'm not going to go out of the confines of the park here. Let's go out to that corner. You know, we're going to be roughly 200 meters. Okay, there's 200 meters. Now, uh, I've heard people taken, people that have taken this drone clear out to a kilometer, but we're not going to try that with this guy. Uh, the Hubson Zeno, I know, will do that, but I have talked to people with this drone that they, that, uh, I've never flown it out that far, but that you do lose FPV after a certain point, and then you're kind of flying blind, and I don't want to do that. So we're bringing it back to us. Pretty good, uh, pretty good battery here. We've got 80% battery still. We're dropping in height as we bring it back. I noticed that seems to, yeah, so now we're getting uh, compass interference again. And it was out in the middle of the field there, so. Okay, so we're gonna try some of the modes with this guy. So I'm gonna bring it in here as soon as this gentleman jogs by. Okay, we'll bring it in now. We got a uh, we got a bumblebee that just does not like that drone. I'm telling you, he was 
flying right around it there. Okay. So I'm going to uh, walk away from the Canon camera here and uh, we're going to try out some of the flight modes. So that's me flying it away from us. And one thing about this drone and the Hubson Zeno both is they, it, they do not have any kind of obstacle avoidance. So when you're using these automated flight modes, you got to be careful because they'll fly right into a tree or something. So, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing again that uh, magnetic interference, but the drone is very, very stable, no toilet bowling. So uh, we are going to try, uh, well, let's try tracking first. And uh, the, the cool thing about this is uh, you can see the scroll wheel on the side. You can adjust the height. Let's kick it up to, whoop, that's too far. Wow. I meant to put it on 10 meters. So 10 meters. And we're getting that interference again. Let me drop the camera down here. See if I can adjust. Yeah. I tried to get myself in center of frame. I don't know what it's... Yeah, it kind of it kind of moved around there. I was uh, I was getting ready to uh, pull the down stick because it was kind of flying away from me uh, and even turned away from me. So you can see it is following me around, although uh, I'm not in center of frame, and you know I don't know what the point of the follow me mode is if you if you're not in the center of the frame. Although now yeah, you know now going the other way, it's kind of got me again. So it does work, uh, and, but it's, it's definitely moving around. That could have to do with that uh, compass interference. So uh, we're going to go back into position mode, and that gives us safe flight again. So we, we don't have that uh, compass interfered warning anymore. So we're going to try, uh, oh, now we got it again, but we're going to try an orbit. And what that does is uh, it'll just start circling and then you have to, so you put it over the top of whatever you want to circle and it, it'll just start at 360. And then, uh, then I'm going to, I'm going to pull it, I'm going to back it off here. And then there you can see me, see if I can get roughly in the center of the frame. And then it starts its orbit and it's orbiting at a pretty good speed, pretty good clip here. So that does work. Although there again, you know, trying to stay uh, in the center of frame, probably not so much. I mean, you know, in order to stay in the center of the frame, you really have to have that optical tracking and the, uh, and the Hudson Zeno does have that. But that works. We're down to 60% battery according to this. So we got, Plenty of time on the battery. Uh, we've been recording for almost 10 minutes. So, you know, that probably gets you a 15 or 16 minute safe flight time. Okay, I am gonna go back into position mode and get some altitude. Yeah, and as soon as I did, we got that uh, magnetic interference again. The drone is not, uh, it, it, it's not toilet bowling, it's not exhibiting any of those uh, kind of problems that you usually get with uh, magnetic problems. I'm flying it back direct to the camera where I'm going to be. Usually there's not this many people in the park, but uh, boy there is today. Okie dokie, let's, uh, let's pick up the uh, gimbal just a little bit. And let's uh, let's fly around here a little and just get some uh, some of the video quality with this guy and I'm looking at the drone you know I know it's giving us that magnetic interference but it's uh, it's flying just fine there's no toilet bowling or any problems 
So let's kind of go in the corner over here and you can kind of get a look at the uh, at the mountains. All right. Let's get some altitude here. Yeah, then we get that magnetic interference again and I don't know I don't know what to say about that. So we're at about 40% battery. I'm going to go to the... Boy, look at the bees around the drone. They don't like it. And it's it's up there, too. It's it's at uh, 65 meters high, and you saw bees around the lens there. So let's head that direction, the other corner. And there again, we want to pay attention to the quality of the video. We're looking for smooth, jello-free video. I don't expect this to have, uh, you know, the, the definition that... Uh, uh, that we're going to find on the Hubson Zeno because it's got a 4K camera. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Alright, I'm going to hit return to home. I'm going to do it on the app. Yeah, it doesn't work on the app. Now, I forgot about that. If you're controlling this with just the app, it will work on the app. If you're using the controller, you've got to use the button on the controller, so we're going to hit that. We'll see how accurately it does here. Uh, we may have to, uh, in fact, I'm 90% sure we'll have to cancel it and, uh, and take over because I landed right on the corner of this concrete pad here. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard to say, but it definitely looks off to me. It's going to land right on top of the building here. So I canceled that, and uh, we're going to back it off. Let me pick the camera back up. So this drone does not have precision landing, so I did not expect a precision landing out of it. Let's adjust the camera here. See if I can bring it down. There we did. And I like how those props just shut off immediately. Uh, I need to remember to stop recording here. And I was able to do that on the app. Okay, now for the uh, Hubson Zeno. So uh, we're going to take this guy up in the air. And uh, yeah, I'm just about ready to go. This, is, uh, this one is a little bit easier to prepare. Uh, they just updated the app that gives you now a, a drone status report. So we should know immediately as soon as we turn on the drone, uh, you know, whether we need any calibrations or anything. That is an awesome addition. So let me uh, get this thing fired up. Okay, so I've got the controller and the uh, uh, drone fired up. Let's start the app now in uh, the X Hubson app. And uh, as soon as it connects, we should see that uh, the drone status report. So take it just a second to connect here. Weak GPS signal. Yeah, so there's the drone status report. So it says we're connected. It says the aircraft is connected. It tells us the firmware that we're running. You can see that pretty clearly there. Uh, that's my fir favorite firmware package right there. Status normal. Uh, compass normal. Uh, gyro normal. Gimbal normal. Uh, voltage, power, 100%. We're ready to go. That is just an awesome addition. So, uh, so let's get out of there. Let's go into the camera set. Whoops, we want to switch to video. And as soon as we switch to video or I start video, it'll ask me to do a, uh, a GPS uh, calibration or a GPS uh, synchronization. So uh, let's uh, let's look at our video settings. And we are in 4K, 30 frames per second. White balance is set to sunny day. 
we're good to go. So I'm going to start video, and it'll ask me for that uh, that uh, GPS uh, uh, handshake. So it says our GPS accuracy is good, and what that does is that is really the only that's only necessary for the automated flight modes, so that the GPS on your phone and the GPS on the drone agree. So let's go ahead and start recording now. So recording has started, and uh, we are in normal mode. If you're not familiar with the Hubson Zeno, it does have a sport mode switch. It doesn't do anything. Uh, you could say it's always in normal mode or it's always in sport mode, whichever you prefer. So let's hit the takeoff button here. And we got some wind, so let's see how steady this guy is. And it asks us if we're sure we want to take off. So, I didn't have the camera down there where you saw the immediate takeoff. But, so that's rising now and I have my hands off the sticks here. So it's risen clear out of frame here. I'm going to bring it back down. So that's that's pretty typical of this drone. It has no downward sensors. So like that uh, that Ishin EX4 had both sonic sensors and uh, and and it had a uh, optical flow sensor. This has neither of those. So uh, let's uh, let's spin it around here once, and it typically will move around a little bit when you spin it around. And it's rising. But like I said, the only thing this thing has to tell it where it's at in space is the uh, barometer and uh, and GPS. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's do a uh, manual droney. So we're going to go reverse and up now. Drop the camera down here a little. So there we are down there. And this drone uh, is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very confident in the abilities of this guy. And part of it is just because I've flown it so much. Uh, but yeah, we're up there at about 70 meters high. And we've got good solid control here, good solid FPV. Let me pick up the pick the gimbal back up so we can get, kind of get that rule of thirds, and that's the other thing that Hubson does well. Nice flat horizon. So we'll swing it around here a little bit, kind of let you take a look at the lay of the land. And you know, I, I uh, often I'll fly out there over that field, but I'm not going to today because you can see all that equipment and stuff down there. Don't want to do that. Not that I don't trust the drone, but you know, you just you didn't you don't want to be too careful. You don't want to fly over the top of people, and there's enough traffic on that road that uh, you know it used to be that that road was a lot less traveled, and you could find a gap and cross it, but uh, it's tougher and tougher. So we're not even going to go there. So look at speed wise, we're a little over 8 meters per second with this guy. See if I can do a gradual turn here. Bring it back towards us. And we're up there a ways. One of the issues that I always have with this drone is cross-coupling, giving it inadvertent commands. The uh, controller on this thing is really is kind of a toy-grade controller, uh, so sometimes it can be hard to get good, smooth uh, controls with it. And now, because I was uh, on the other side of the of this uh, picnic shelter, uh, I got a little bit of break up there on FPV. That was between me and the drone. So let's go out here to this opposite corner. We're at 72% battery. We've been flying for a little over four minutes. I'm sure I pointed towards the drone. I wasn't. There's that corner. Okay, let's bring it back to us here. And there again, what I want you to look for is nice, smooth, jello-free video. And I'm looking at the drone up there. 
Okay, I'm turning it towards us, and we're going to drop some altitude and come back. And that's, you can see the picnic shelter down there. We're standing right next to that. So let's drop some altitude and bring her home. Sorry for the silence there. I was looking at my FPV screen. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to walk out there and we're going to try... Uh, let's start with tracking. We'll try tracking first. And I want to add that this drone does a really good job. It'll do optical tracking as well as GPS tracking. And you'll see that the optical tracking will do a good job of keeping me in the center of the frame. Okay, it's a little bit windy, so I'm sure you're going to get some wind noise off of my iPhone here. But I can't help that. Uh, so we're going to go on this X up in the corner up here, and we're going to go into following mode. And right there in that app, we can choose active track or follow me. Now follow me is GPS to GPS. And that's the one that won't necessarily keep you in center of frame, just like the EX4. So let's try that first. And uh, yeah, we need to get some more altitude, it says. So we got blue there, so let's execute immediately. We're going to hide that. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can push it backwards. And we can. I'm walking towards the drone, and it's, uh, it's going backwards. On this guy, I can drop the gimbal so that I can get into the frame there. So that's pushing the drone backwards, and then let's see if it'll follow me sideways, and it is, but I can kind of walk out of frame if I stop. Yeah, it'll kind of center me again. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's how the uh, GPS tracking works. So let's uh, exit that, and then we're going to go back into, let me get it centered on me here a little. And we're going to go back into uh, following mode, and this time we're going to choose active track. And what I have to do in active track is draw a box around myself and it's got me. I click go and it's following me optically. So it should keep me in center of frame. So we're moving backwards and it's doing that. And that's something, this is probably the cheapest drone that you will find uh, that that kind of active track on and it works pretty darn good there again motion at my front door again so there you go active track let's uh, let's walk back over to the uh, Canon camera and then we're gonna do an orbit and this guy uh, well, let's let's first let's do an orbit here, and I'm going to show you uh, how it can use the uh, the controller as the point of interest. So we're going to hit uh, orbit mode again, and uh, we're going to set the transmitter as the point of interest. And uh, next step, and it's it, it, you can see because it says radius is in blue and altitude is in blue, so it likes both of those. There again, well, let's go the other direction. I'm gonna hit that slider the other way. And the drone is turning around. And that's top speed. So let's see if I can raise altitude while I'm doing that. And I can. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have it continue to circle let me drop the gimbal down here. So what I thought it would do would was follow the controller, but it did not. It's just staying on that same circle. So you can see me down there. So where I started that is the controller at the center. So it sets that as the center. So even if you move, uh, it's going to stay in that same spot. Uh, I'd never tried that before. I was wondering if I was wondering if it would follow me back, and it didn't. So uh, yeah, we're down to about 30% battery. 
So let's, uh, we're going to click stop there. So we stopped that and uh, let's kick the gimbal back up and uh, grab some altitude. And we're going to fly it out there. We're at about 25% battery, so we're going to get a return to home here anytime. So that's a fast yaw there, guys, full speed yaw. Because I want to go out to this other corner over here before it kicks into return to home. Yeah, so, so I let go of the sticks and it's giving us that uh, countdown. So let's let it count down and we'll just watch it return to home. And you saw it reorient itself, it's heading back home right now. So there again, we'll uh, we'll watch this guy, and we'll see uh, we'll see just how accurate it is. Kind of lowering the gimbal as it comes back here, and we may have to abort that if it uh, if it's not right on target. But we'll watch it here. It's looking good from what I can see right now. The thing is, when you look up in the air, it always kind of scares you a little bit, and to abort that. You can uh, you can just you just hit the button, and you can do it with the sticks too. I'll tell you what, it's pretty damn close, guys. I am going to I'm just going to let it land. Yeah, it's a little bit out in the grass. We're going to let it cut the grass. Yeah. So uh, you know, it was just off the sidewalk there. Uh, and it prompts us to stop recording, which is great. So stop recording and that way you don't lose that video file. So, uh, so let me get this thing shut down and, uh, and we'll do a conclusion. Okie dokie, uh, the Isheen EX4 uh, and the Hubson Zeno. This is the original Hubson Zeno again. Uh, so, you know, they're fairly comparable price-wise. This thing uh, typically is around uh, 250 bucks or so on Banggood. They'll run a sale every once in a while. You can catch a really, really hot sale, and it'll be 180 bucks. Uh, I think uh, it's about 220 bucks right now with the coupon code. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'll put a link uh, in the description. Uh, my affiliate link with Banggood and the coupon code in there and you can see what it brings it down to. Uh, the Hubson Zeno, uh, I've seen this, the Zeno as low as 215 bucks. Uh, I think when it originally came out it was $369. When I bought this one originally back in 2018 I paid $299 on their initial rollout. They were offered a pretty good price on it. But again, I've seen it as low as $215, and I had an, a, an ad from Banggood the other day in their European warehouse that it was $215 for this drone. Uh, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't access it to check that out, so I don't know if that's valid or not, but if you're in Europe, you ought to look at Banggood's European website and look for that discount code and, and see if you can get it for that because if you can it's a steal. Uh, but even at that I think uh, uh, you can get this thing for around 270 bucks right now or something. Banggood's got a discount code going on it, uh, with it right now. Uh, I couldn't find the single battery version without a case that would have brought it down a little bit. Starts at 299 would have brought it down to about I don't know 270 or something like that, but if you get the version with case, I, don't quote me on this again. It's around 280, something like that. But again, I'll put the I'll put my affiliate link and the discount code uh, in the description below, and I think those codes are good through the end of May. So uh, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to shop around and get the best deal you can. Uh, this guy you see on a number of different websites. Hubson will sell one to you. Hubson US, which is different than Hubson. It's a different outfit. They've got it. Uh, most of the uh, Chinese warehouses have it. I think even B&H Photo, I think you can find this Hubson on. 
The Isheen, you're only going to find that on Banggood's website because Isheen is their house brand. But this is the sister ship to the Seafly Faith or the JJRC X12. They're all three the same. So if you find the C if you find the Seafly Faith or the JJRC X12, it's exactly the same drone as this. Uh, okay, all of that stuff out of the way. So uh, I, I would say we had a really good flight with the with the Hubson Zeno. Uh, it flew just as I knew it would because I've I've flown it so much. Uh, you know. No, the only, the only thing that we had even close to an FPV dropout is when I let it get the other side of me uh, on this uh, picnic shelter and I didn't have the uh, remote control pointed towards it and all that was was a little blip on FPV. It froze a little bit. Uh, so yeah, it, you know, I've had this thing out a kilometer. I have, uh, I have done all kinds of torture tests with this guy. I've disconnected the controller, disconnected the the uh, mobile device and stuff, and it always comes home. You know, just to test it, always returns home. Uh, this guy, you know, we struggled with uh, the mechanical, uh, or mechanical, put the Xeno down there. We struggled with magnetic interference. We did, we did get a good compass calibration this time. Uh, and thank you again to Blue Skyver for telling me how that worked. You gotta hit that button. The button says calibrating, so you think you're in calibration mode, but you're not. You gotta hit the button and then and then you can calibrate. Uh, but but we did get it calibrated. As soon as we took off, we got compass errors, and I've never ever flown this thing that I didn't almost immediately get compass errors. Now uh, it uh, as you saw that that first time it started toilet bowling a little bit and then it settled down and it was fine but even when we were getting this compass errors I just think that's something in the app because the drone was fine I didn't see I was watching it really close I didn't see any abnormalities so I'm gonna tell you don't get too concerned about that because I don't think it's an issue because like I said even when I was getting those compass errors the drone was flying perfectly fine it was perfectly stable there were no circular motion it was taking controls perfectly no problem there uh, so we did fly it out you know take a look at the uh, at the video on it and we'll see how that video looks I've flown it before and I've seen some shakiness in the video but we'll see when we look at this uh, when I get it home uh, it's uh, uh, it, it actually flew pretty good. It's not the fastest drone, but uh, you know the con it, you know you heard me complain a little bit about the Zeno about the precision on the controls. This thing is even a little bit less than that. The Zeno is a little more precise than this, but it does fly, and you can control it uh, pretty decently. Uh, and uh, so yeah, take a look at that video, and then we tried the follow me mode again. It's a GPS follow me, so. It doesn't exactly keep you in center of frame, but the follow me does work. And we tried the uh, the orbit, and the the orbit does work. So uh, yeah, and then it, then it's uh, it's it also does have a waypoint mode, although uh, I I didn't try that, but you might try that sometime. So anyway, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this video, and I, I hope you got something out of it, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hubson Zeno and Isheen EX4, both, uh, both some uh, pretty decent products. So, uh, yeah, see ya.